In my last video, I talked about the importance of using an isolation transformer when you're troubleshooting. Well, I want to expound on that a little bit more. I mentioned that a lot of the TVs in the old days had a hot chassis in reference to earth ground. So, for example, if you were to take a, a light bulb and hook a ground wire to it from an earth ground and uh, touch it to the chassis, you'd see the light bulb come on. And that was the reason you had to have an isolation transformer. But what I don't think I mentioned was that the modern day TVs almost always are going to have an isolated chassis ground. So for example, if I was to take this light bulb here, which I could put into this little port on this outlet, you see that come on, I can touch it to the chassis, nothing happens. On the other hand, uh, there's a part of the power supply that is hot in reference to earth ground, and that would be the hot side of the power supply. So if I touch it down here, you can see the light bulb still comes on. Well, there's a reason for that, and if you look at the way the switch mode power supplies are constructed, you'll note that they have a sectioned off portion here with the white line designating which side of this power supply is hot in reference to earth ground and which side is cold in reference to earth ground. So, for example, I could take an earth ground, touch it somewhere here on the circuit board, and potentially blow something up, whereas on the other hand, if I touch it to this side, nothing's likely to happen. I don't recommend you try it, but it's uh, in theory, you should be okay. Now, if, if you're wondering why that would be, if you look at the way a, a power supply is put together, it's fairly easy to understand because basically what we've got here is part of a switch mode power supply, simplified version of it. Here we've got our AC cord coming in. We've got our alternating current going into this bridge rectifier, and of course DC comes out this way, negative here, positive here. And then of course we're going to uh, unload this DC power into this reservoir capacitor and then on to this transformer. Well the transformer doesn't pass DC, it has to be pulsed DC or alternating current. So in this case we've got this pulse width modulation IC that sends pulses to this transistor allowing the ground to go up this way into the uh, transformer and the positive uh, of course is already hooked to the transformer so when you pulse it, then you can get an output on this side. Now you might note that, that this side is isolated. So whatever I wanted to measure on this side of the switching power supply, you have to measure from a chassis ground. Again, that would be the ground here, for example. Or any ground point that's uh, the equivalent on, on the circuit board here would be fine too. On the other hand, if you wanted to measure the uh, voltages here, positive going voltage, you'd want to pick a ground that's on the hot side of the uh, power supply. In this case I would pick the uh, the ground on the bridge rectifier. Or actually, I mean you could pick any ground here. All these grounds with these symbols are tied together. And uh, you might note by the way um, here we've got a different symbol here on this output indicating it's got an isolated ground from this. Now I've seen them use alternating uh, ground symbols. I, I, all I know is that if I'm seeing one type of ground symbol here and a different type here that usually lets me know that it's isolated. So again, if you're going to measure your voltages uh, looking at the power supply, you would have to pick the negative side uh, on the hot side of the transfer, you'd pick the negative side of the bridge rectifier or anything that's tied to that. So for example, most of you know this already, but for the beginners, I want to go over this again. If we look at our bridge rectifier, for example, we're going to see the two sine waves there, symbol, uh, letting us know that that's our AC going in. DC is coming out, of course. And here we take a look, we've got uh, a negative symbol there, a positive on this side. So if I wanted to take my uh, meter probe, for example, I could simply take the black lead and touch it to the uh, negative side here on the bridge rectifier. And then I could take my other probe and, and just probe around here looking at voltages on the, uh, on the uh, hot side. And so um, again, this the equivalent of this here Oh, let, me, let me backtrack. Uh, if we look at the way this is set up, basically all of our all of our pulses are developed on this side uh, from this side of the uh, power supply. For example, we're pulsing the primary of this transformer here, and what comes out on the other side and is rectified through these diodes is all isolated. So again, I'd use the chassis ground for the cold side, and I use a uh, a ground pin over here if I was measuring something on the hot side. You know, I remember hearing a story about a guy that uh, was sent out on a job. He just got got a job working in a TV shop, and uh, the boss knew he didn't know, know a whole lot, so he told him to go out to the job site and measure some voltages. 
Well, he reported back all kinds of strange readings and he couldn't figure out what was going on and finally they put two and two together and they realized that the guy was measuring from the wrong ground. So you will get some kind of reading if you measure from the gr wrong ground, but it's not going to be the readings you're looking for. In fact, you can just simply hold your meter probe in the air and you're going to get some kind of reading. So you can imagine if you touch it somewhere on the circuit board using the wrong ground, how, how confusing that can be. And a lot of guys that are just starting out do stuff like that. Of course, TVs are a lot different now than they were when I first started out. So uh, you don't have all the headaches you did uh, back then. But uh, actually, in some ways, you have more headaches. Things were a lot easier to work on. Most of the components were nice and big like this. And uh, well, nowadays, you're more likely to see something like this parts so small you you could fit three of them in a grain of rice and still have room left over. Anyway I think I pretty much covered it all. I hope I did. As always if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe.